Hey everyone, it's Sam McGuire from Enterprise DNA. I want to go over a really unique example today. It's a really cool one uh, and actually came from the Enterprise DNA support forum. So I'll quickly just navigate that. But basically it, it centers around an accounting reporting requirement around aged trial balances. Okay. And so what we had uh, in the, this was a, 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 an example from uh, a enterprise, an enterprise DNA member. They needed to create this exact report and they were struggling with it. So I had a look at it and I saw immediately that, that we could apply some of our grouping and segmentation knowledge to the specific requirement. Now, there was a bit of a nuance in terms of the formula that we needed to use. And that was um, what I, I spent a bit of time working out. But uh, what it came down to is I realized it's not actually too far removed from some um, the many grouping and segmentation type work that you can do inside of Power BI. It just requires some you know, minor adjustments to the particular logic that goes into the formula. Now, just so you, if, if you don't know what an age trial balance is, and, and to be honest, I had to remind myself what it was as well. Um, I just did, uh, at the time, I just did a bit of searching, and you'll see here that it, ju it just gives you a breakdown. or gives you like groups or buckets of how your, um, your I guess, payables or receivables in, 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 in some cases, um, how far out they are. And so through time, you can kind of see, okay, well, we have a lot of receivables or payables due in 90 days or 120 or 60 or in the next in the next month, that kind, of, that kind of logic. And you want to be able to just group them and then just glance over, you know, look at your analysis and say, okay, well, this is, this is what we um, have in terms of cash going out or cash coming in. You know, so it's really good from a cash management perspective in businesses. Okay, so how do we do it? How do we do it? Let's have a quick look at the data. So here's an example uh, that we work through. Um, and so let's have a look at the example. So what happens is that you have, say, you know, you have values and then you have two dates, right? You have a, in this particular case, they're called clearing date and due date. And so what we need to work out is we need to work out, okay, well, what is the difference between these two particular dates? And then group those, those, those date differences based on whatever group we select, right? And so, and we need to do it dynamically at every single row, and that's the trick. Is that at every single row, we need to go and run an evaluation, see if it's true, and if it is, it, uh, then we add that number to that particular group. If it is not, we then go find the group that we do add it to. There will be a group for every single uh, particular um, uh, row here, or every uh, particular iteration here. We just need to uh, work out the logic to allocate it to the correct group. And you'll see here when we actually look at the grouping table so this is the the table that uh, that that i created for the solution and it was just I, I just made up the numbers but you could rearrange this however you like so you first of all need to and and i th and what i used at the time i mean this table can come from a variety of sources but what i used at the time was the enter data just created some randomized groups and you'll see here that I created these bins, you know, these bins or, or segments of these groups. So we've, what we've got here is we've got uh, 1 to 30, so 1 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days, and plus 90 days, okay? I've also added the sort order column, which is which is quite key when you have text values like this, because what you need to do is you need to make sure that you can sort by something so that they these actually go in the correct order if you're showing them in, say, a visualization or something like that which I have done in the, um, in, the in, in, in the next page I'll just show you. And so this is the setup, right? So you want the setup um, and this table has, it has no relationship. So um, this is, this this table has no relationship to anything here. So this is the transaction table. This is the, the aging table, uh, the aging groups, right? And what we are going to do is we're going to, and this this could be termed a secondary table or supporting table. This is what this is what the terms that I use to um, for these particular tables. And what we want to do is we want to iterate through this table and then run logic through this table. Okay. So let's have a look. Now the first thing we need to do is something really simple. We just need to sum up that value column, right? And that is just so we can get a starting, a core measure which generates some, some value for us. But we can't just use this, right? Because there's no relationship between this table here and here. So we can't use that formula for anything. It won't return any um, correct result because no filtering will take place. We need to do the filtering within our formula. So this is the formula that we that we utilized here, right? Okay. So basically what this is doing is exactly the logic I kind of described in this in this tutorial. We need to iterate. We need to ultimately return the total value. 
which is just that measure we went into before. But we need to iterate through every single row in the transaction table. At every single row, we need to work out the difference in those days. And what I've done is I've used date diff, the date diff formula to do that. And basically, it just works out the date difference, right? It's a, it's a great time intelligence function for that type of work. So at every single row, we are working out what the date difference is between those two particular columns. What we first do, though, and, and we do need to work that out every single row, but what we are doing at the same time for at every single row here is we are also going through every single row in the aged debtors group table okay and we're trying to work out what well, is the difference greater than or equal to the min of of that particular table and is it also less than or equal to the max column in that table and we're doing that at every single row in that particular table now, if this evaluates too true, what's going to happen is that this count rows logic, which is wrapped around it, will also evaluate too true. Okay? And if it evaluates to true, then it will return total value. If it if the say goes to the first row, so if the say goes to the very first row here and it evaluates to false, so it is not between the days are not between or equal to 1 or 30 then what happens it will go to the second row and run logic there and then if that is not true then it'll go to the third row and so on and so forth and then something will evaluate to true and the one that does will then return total value in that particular group right so it's pretty cool logic right pretty cool and a pretty unique example of how you can utilize some of the um, grouping and segmenting techniques inside of uh, inside of your models. This is a really great one, really great application um, from a accounting perspective and financial uh, analysis perspective. And then you can turn it into uh, turn these into a couple of visualizations. Uh, you know, how, however you want to however you want to showcase them. Okay, so short, relatively short and sweet today. This is a really um, specific and, and quite unique accounting one, but um, yeah, a really good one. And Power BI is fantastic for this type of analysis. I mean, when you combine this with the financial analysis capability that you can now utilize, that I, I, you know, I really like to showcase, especially um, around that templating, uh, the templating concepts that I like to talk about. This, this is some powerful stuff. Okay. All the best. Uh, if you like, if you like this one, if you if you got a lot out of it and um, can utilize this in some way, shape, or form, uh, really appreciate a like on the video. That'd be great. And then don't forget to uh, subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of unique and unique uh, concepts and techniques coming coming to you uh, all the time. So look forward to getting that to you. Okay. All the best.